We've covered a lot of macho heroes here on Death Battle, but these two are as manly and stoic as they come. It's all in those sweet-ass jackets. I mean, I, I guess they're pretty badass, too. Jotaro Kujo, the delinquent turned hero from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Andy. Avatar Korra, the master of all four elements. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. As a teenager, Jotaro Kujo was a fairly infamous troublemaker. But you can just call him Jojo like his friends do. Get it? Jotaro Kujo. How bizarre. Well, being a high school hoodlum isn't usually a good idea. It worked out great for him, because he toughed up a lot. At the age of 17, Jotaro was arrested for brutally pummeling four known gang members, who were armed with knives and nunchucks of all things, with apparently his bare fists. But Jotaro had a bigger problem. He didn't know how he did it. He knew he was tough, but not that tough. So he came to the only conclusion that makes sense. He was possessed by an evil spirit! <laughs> Just like my pet rat. Yeah, wait, is that why he's been scratching pentagrams all over his cage? You'll find out. But then Jotaro did something absolutely crazy. To prove his theory, he swiped a police officer's gun, pointed it straight at his head, and fired. And that's how he died. Just kidding! A third arm popped out of his body to stop the bullet, of course! This strange being attached to Jotaro wasn't an evil spirit at all. It's an entity physically generated by Jotaro himself, and inherited through his bloodline. Yeah, lots of the Jojo family has them, including his granddad, Joseph! These beings are called stands, literally because they stand by you. Ugh, I mean, I guess it's not wrong. It's so lame! Stands are powered by their user's life force, and turns out Jotaro's life force is supercharged because he's got one of the strongest stands of all, Star Platinum. Star Platinum has superhuman strength, speed, precision, and vision. He can even phase through bodies and affect a person's inner organs. Plus, while Star Platinum can take a solid hit, most stands can only be damaged by other stands or stand users. So, he's basically invincible unless he's fighting another stand? Exactly. In fact, unless you have a stand of your own, you wouldn't even be able to see Star Platinum. Oh great, so he's invincible and invisible. And when you combine all that with Jotaro's fighting skills and exceptional cleverness, they make a magnificent team. That's good, because Jotaro soon found out his family's old vampire nemesis was out to get him. <laughs> With Star Platinum at his side, Jotaro didn't just stand up to Dio, he copied Dio's greatest ability, the Time Stop. With this new power, Star Platinum can freeze time everywhere for five seconds. He can do it multiple times, though it does need a sort of recharge between uses. Kinda like an ability cooldown in a video game, or me in the bedroom, ladies. But still, he can friggin' stop time! In Jotaro's case, he may be human, but he's strong enough to smash through stone and leap several stories. On the other hand, Star Platinum is said to be faster than light. Sure, technically he can because he can stop time or whatever, but he can't really move that fast normally, right? Well, maybe. Star Platinum has matched his speed with another stand called Silver Chariot. Silver Chariot previously defeated a different stand called Hanged Man. Long story short, Hank Van moves between reflections at light speed, and Silver Chariot caught him in mid-movement. Granted, Silver Chariot had to use an elaborate plan to force Hank Van into moving in a predictable direction. If Silver Chariot was truly faster than light, he wouldn't have needed to resort to such a plan. But the fact he caught Hanged Man at all is proof enough that he's at least close to light speed. So that means Star Platinum is close to light speed too. And he's got the super strength to back up his super speed. He can lift a steamroller that's around 60 tons. He broke the top of this building off and threw it like a javelin. And then there's the time that he broke a giant monster lady's teeth that were harder than diamonds. The definition of hardness refers to an object's protection from scratches. But we could also compare this to pressure resistance or the possibility of fracture through a diamond's cleavage. <laughs> Not that kind of cleavage. <clears throat> the toughest diamonds break around 600 gigapascals. This means Star Platinum can clearly strike with a force equivalent to 3 million tons. 
Turns out diamonds aren't forever when star platinum's around. What can't this guy do? Sounds like nobody could beat him. Maybe not, but unlike Stan's, Jotaro isn't invincible or invisible. And whenever Jotaro is hurt, Star Platinum feels the same pain. In fact, when a stand user dies, so does their stand. And vice versa. Sure, but with a guy like Star Platinum having his back, I don't think Jotaro has a whole lot to worry about. These two are one kick-ass duo. And stylish. Your receipt. You can keep the freaking change. Avatar Aang, savior of the world, uniter of four nations, destroyer of cabbages. But like all avatars, after decades of service, he passed away. Humanity would have to move forward and prepare his next reincarnation to take up his mantle. But who could fill Aang's shoes? Her name was Korra. Wiz, who is that? Did you leave the door open again? Deuces, gents. Uh, unlike her carefree predecessor, the hot-headed, obstinate Korra was an Avatar prodigy from day one. I'm the Avatar! You gotta deal with it! While Aang struggled to accept his role in the world, Korra never wanted to be anything else. Not only is she an expert hand-to-hand -hand fighter on her own, as a bender, Korra can manipulate the natural world around her through martial arts. And as the Avatar, she is the only living being who can bend all four elements at once. Water, earth, fire, air! Heart. Not you! Straight from the Southern Water Tribe, Korra can control tendrils of water, form massive walls of ice, and generate huge tsunamis. Aang once raised the sea level to put out these huge fires. Looking at the size of the area and what it'd take to submerge it, he had to move over 35 million metric tons of water! And since Korra is a reincarnation of Aang and every past avatar, she should be just as powerful. With earthbending, Korra can heave big-ass boulders around, shape and control metal, and even tear apart the ground beneath her enemy's feet. Kinda like when her avatar ancestor Kyoshi broke off a chunk of a continent, dragged it across a bay, and basically just created a new island, named after herself, Queen Shit. By measuring the size of the island to get its mass, and the size of the bay to get the distance Kyoshi dragged it, displacing this much rock would require an energy over 21 gigatons of TNT. That's almost 15 times more energy than the entire world's nuclear arsenal detonating at the same time. With firebending, Korra can fire blasts of, well, fire, jet into the sky like a rocket, or breathe like a friggin' dragon. The perfect element to match Korra's hot-headed temper. However, her final element was completely different. Due to its inherently zen, free-flowing nature, Korra struggled, at first, to master airbending. But like all good prodigies, she figured it out anyways. With airbending, Korra can shoot powerful gusts of wind, fly around on tornadoes, and create a cute little air scooter. She used this element to defeat the bloodbender Amon, who was fast enough to dodge lightning. He is not the only one. Zuko and Iroh have caught and dodged lightning as well, and Iroh even caught one from the sky. The leader of a lightning bolt moves at 60,000 meters per second. Comparing the distance Amon moved relative to the bolt, he must have been moving over 200 times the speed of sound. But Korra's more than just a badass martial arts superhero, she also acts as the bridge between the mortal and spirit worlds. The spirit world is a separate plane of reality, and Korra is stronger while she's physically there. Her direct connection isn't coincidence. She and every avatar before her are fused with the spirit of light, Rava. Every time the avatar <laughs> dies and reincarnates, Rava searches out the spirit to bond with their new body, a staple of Hindu and Buddhist cosmology. I've done a lot of research into reincarnation, which I'll demonstrate today with Boomstick and this anvil. Wait, what was Now, the Avatar is usually reborn into a different nation, but I've set this up so Boomstick will reincarnate into the nearest vessel, this identical clone body. Hey, Wiz! <laughs> I feel funny! Ah! Why are there two of me? Ah! Where'd my banana go? Ah! Cut off his leg and everything. Speaking of messing with your soul, Korra can remove or restore your bending, bring her past lives for advice, and tap into the kick-ass Avatar State. The Avatar State massively boosts Korra's raw bending power, turning her into effectively a demigod and the de facto most powerful being on the planet, if she wasn't already. Despite that, Korra's no stranger to failure. She was severed from her connection to the past Avatars and was almost killed while in the Avatar State, which would have ended her cycle of reincarnation entirely. That last brush with death left 
after physically and emotionally crippled for years. Even after physical therapy, her fiery spirit struggled to reignite. Korra's entire identity was wrapped up in being the Avatar, all the way from day one. And the biggest trials she had to face were when her place in the world was challenged. Would everyone be better off without an Avatar? Or bending at all? But Korra's nothing if not one hell of a fighter. No matter what life threw at her, she always got back up to kick ass. Korra once blocked an energy blast from a giant spirit cannon, which created this massive crater in the center of Republic City, and almost killed everyone. Taking a look at the width and depth of this crater, and assuming it was all vaporized, Korra must have held back a blast worth almost six megatons of TNT. More queen shit. And during harmonic convergence, Korra tapped into enough spirit energy to turn into a giant kaiju and battle the dark avatar Unalak for the fate of the world. Wiz, I told you, we don't talk about season two. Okay, one was cool. And from taking down anarchist revolutionaries to fascist empires, Korra proved herself as an avatar worthy of her forebearers. With her teammates Mako and Bolin, teachers like Tenzin and Toph, and badass girlfriend Asami by her side, there was nothing she couldn't do. Queen shit? Queen shit. Come on, little girl. Give me your best shot. <laughs> Oh, wait, what just happened? The winner is Jotaro Kujo.